Pretty fun there, Cruiser Mel. Da, 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 da. <laughs> it does. I'm so excited about this show because you know they didn't let a whole lot of secrets out about Todd Scott. So we we pretty much know nothing That's until right. tonight, today, wherever you are. <laughs> it yeah. all depends. So great job, Mr. Whetstone, Bruce, and Tom Coots put this together. Executive producers. And a lot of work went into it because there's a ton of video footage from Todd Scott. We're going to get to see the best of it tonight or today, depending again where you are. I'm going to say that the whole time. We did this during the day, United States time, so our friends overseas could get in on the action. Those that aren't watching the big soccer match between England and Italy or oh, football. Oh, yes. Yeah. All mm -hmm. right. So, Cruiser Mellis, without further ado, let's get started. we got a special guest who were at Todd Scott. And we'll do most of the talking instead of me and Mel. So you got lucky today for this show. Bruce Whetstone, welcome. Peace. Peace. <laughs> welcome. There you go. Cindy Michelson. What's up? Anthony McGarrickle, who has been on our open mic show. Hello, hello. And Kathleen Forsyth. Howdy. Hello. So we have one overseas guest. Somebody that's yep. on the border of Canada and the USA, Californian and a Boston. We got it all. Texas, Alabama, of course. All right. So, Bruce, tell us uh, how we finally got to see this three years later. Well, first thing I need to do is do a shout out to uh, Peter Rabender, who originally suggested this particular venue and, and the location. And then the other is one of the people that had uh, – 
you know, been instrumental in making sure that we had food and a band and uh, soundstage and a tent and all those things. And that's Jill Mingo. And so Jill yeah, was yeah. very instrumental in pulling off this particular gig. Uh, she couldn't make it today. She had to work. Otherwise, she would be introducing everybody and uh, talking about how it came to be. All right. Thanks, Mingo. Yeah. Well, what about the video here? You guys um, have, have several people have contributed, mostly Tom. Uh, you know, what was that experience like trying to get all that together? How did you decide which ones you were going to show? Yeah, big shout out to Tom, obviously, because, you know, the vast majority of this footage you're going to see today is from Tom Kuntz. And uh, again, we had hoped that he would be able to join us today, but he's also working, uh, has a big project on his plate. But uh, Tom was there with video camera in hand uh, for all the fan band, Todd's concert, uh, storytelling, which we'll see later on in the, in the show, uh, the opening night interviews that we had with Todd, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, the, the team that actually pulled this together, uh, big shout out to Bernie Allen, because Bernie did a yeoman's job, and Anthony, I'm sure you'll agree, in editing the video, because a lot of it was uh, literally shot end to end over an entire hour, hour and a half, sometimes with an interrupt to change discs mm -hmm. in the camera. But otherwise, you know, every song had to be pieced out for us to be able to do this. Yeah, yeah peace out, baby. <laughs> not, yet, right. not yet, not yet, not no yet. Peace out yet. We yes. also had an issue with the soundtrack on a lot of the uh, fan band and, and talks concerts. So Bernie was able to take the recording from his magic recorder and splice it with the video to make the sound better for this show. Okay. Uh, now, Anthony and I and Elliot were all, you know, kind of editors, commentators trying to decide which clips to use. And so uh, Elliot Aitken gets a call out, as does Anthony, who is with us today. All right. Well, let's watch some videos. And in between, we'll talk to you about what the experience was like. Uh, Bruce, what would you how would you describe your experience over there at Todd Scott overall? Well, this particular camp was awesome. We got perfect weather. I mean, you know, everybody said you're going to Scotland in July. Good luck because it'll be gloomy and wet and those midges or what they call no CMs are going to eat you to death. <laughs> and we had none of that. We had this perfect weather for the awesome. entire trip. That's fantastic. All right. So let's start with our first TR interview video and then we'll come back. What you got? You want to intro this at all? Sure. Um, just to prep everybody. So we're going to try to do the videos more or less in chronological or time date order. So the first night we were there, uh, there wasn't time to pull together a fan band. So as um, our evening entertainment, Todd consented to do interviews. And it was, you know, with a mic and, you know, pass the mic around or take the hot seat and <laughs> ask Todd a question. So we've got a couple of good interviews coming up. Cool. All right. Here we go. This is with Android and Kim. Can you swing your sparring? Can I swing the sparring? Scotsman can stand and swing. See those? Oh, we're using no hands. Make the tassels go around. Thank you. And Ann almost got one of those reach arounds right there, didn't she? <laughs> <laughs> we're off to a good start, aren't we? <laughs> wow. So, Kathleen, what did you think about that when you saw Todd up there shaking it like that? Oh my God. I was sitting like two feet in front of him, literally. And it was like hilarious. <laughs> well, first of all, the getup was even, you know, that was, that was a entertaining element of it. You know, his outfit was just amazing. <laughs> Very fun. So Bruce, you got, tell me how this interview worked. I see Ann did one, the next one you did, like it's just whoever Q and A got to go up on the stage. Is that how it worked? They had two or three chairs set up, and so you could kind of line up by taking the next seat. And, of course, we didn't decide to air all of the interviews today, so it's not in sequence. But the next one was uh, me interviewing Todd because this was only a few weeks after the Todd Scott in Virginia, what we call Todd Stock East. 
Mm-hmm. And so I had some things that I wanted to have him recall from that prior Todd stock for the benefit of our UK and EU friends. There you go. Well, good luck topping the and question, but here we go. Well, let's follow this up with another um, television bit that I recall you did. And um, I suspect, you know, the Americans that flew over here for this, some of them will know about this, but it probably didn't air. It was Good Morning America. And I think they were doing a special on spam. <laughs> and, and as I recall, oh, yeah. you had some comments about uh, hot dogs that were uh, particularly cogent. And so I thought maybe you and Michelle could reenact the uh, scene from Good Morning America. <laughs> could we react? Well, then you have to reenact the uh, interviewer. <laughs> <laughs> I recall something about uh, uh, snouts and anuses. Snouts and anuses, yeah. That's what I'm <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You look on the ingredients to a spam can, and it says pork and ham. Now, we know what ham is. Pork could be any part of the freaking pig. You know? but I'll reenact my part. There you go. <laughs> finally, my restaurant is finally on ABC National News about Tiki and Niki. I'm so excited. And what do yeah. you say? Snouts and anuses. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just touting. I was touting the merits of spam. Spam, 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 eggs, and spam. All right. Oh, that's right. I said you can't say them on TV, right? He said I just did. Okay, we have a follow-up. All right. Well, this is you know, now for something completely different. Right. So a couple of weeks ago, we were in Virginia, and um, there was a band. Uh, uh, Secret Society. Ah. Woo! Now, I, now, I remember uh, talking to Susan Leonard after the Cambria camp, and she quoted you as saying that you would like to have one of the fan bands sometime play Fascist Christ. And so, Secret Society played Fascist Christ less than a half a mile from, uh, I think it was... Uh, the Baptist, Baptist Church. Church. Oh, and so I would just... Yeah. It wasn't even a half a mile. You could hit a baseball yeah, yeah, yeah. to the side of the church from where the stage was. Yeah. Okay. Well, the next day we had thunderstorms and rain. And was, you know, I think we got off easy. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's Always funny. witty. No, I don't no. care who you are. That's funny right there. <laughs> I have a question, and and any of you guys can uh, maybe maybe any bit of you guys could answer. Um, I noticed that Todd was drinking a wee dram there. Does anybody know? Uh, was it iced tea in that glass, or was it single malt scotch? And if so, what what brand do we know? Oh, I, a couple of the scotch people brought brought. Scotch, right? Yeah, yeah. Todd taught us. He went to his own private whiskey tasting one evening with uh, Saul Mundy, and Saul had a different bottle of single cask strength scotch with him every night. So (laughs) Todd enjoyed plenty of it, I think. Yeah. Okay, I've never known him to drink scotch, so that was kind of new. When in Scotland, exactly. Absolutely. When in Rome. So, Anthony, was that your first Todd Stock experience? Yeah, it was, Doug, and it was the first time I've actually been to see Todd without taking a plane. <laughs> Living in Ireland, I've either had to fly to England or Holland, or I went to New York one time for the Utopia reunion gig back in 2011. So this time I was able to take the ferry and the car over. So it was just, um, it was one of those weekends that live long in the memory. It was really good. Um, yeah. I met these guys, for example, for the first time as well. So um, hopefully those are the friendships that will endure. So, yeah. Three years later, they seem to be still enduring, I would say. Very much so. All right. So Bruce mentioned Secret Society. The next video has something to do with Secret Society. I'm not sure the band or the song, but let us know. Well, this was, yeah, this was a dance clip because, uh, again, we're, you know, kind of scraping for entertainment the first night, as I recall. So uh, we did a little DJ bit, and this turned out to be a, a good dance clip. Is Jill the DJ for this? Um, I don't remember. No, it was Elliot that put together a playlist, I think, Bruce. Oh, good. Well, let's give yeah, Elliot credit was, for this uh, one. His playlist played all night just after the interview process. 
Okay. Excellent. Dance music. Yeah. 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 Guitar solo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we cut that one a little short. Sorry about that. But uh, I think Todd was actually over in the corner watching all of this, and we had a longer version of that cut, but it would have extended it too long. Where you know you can see him over there with his you know staff, you know observing this whole <laughs> thing. <laughs> mm. That was a bunch of happy people. Oh, it's so fun seeing our friends, isn't it? Oh. Such good dancers. You got a good. <laughs> You got a good view of, you know, kind of who some of the attendees were that you all recognize and, and are familiar with. I saw, I saw Drew in there and I saw John. So, and, Cindy, uh, what would you say Deborah the split Martin. was on uh, United States people versus overseas types? Hmm. I think it was about half. Wow. Mm. What Very I really nice. loved about Todd Scott in particular, and I think with the smaller venues, is you get to know everybody, I think, more on a name-by-name -name basis. And the band was so present. And um, there were only like 12 tables in the room for dining. So you were usually sitting with one of them for dinner. Nice. And they were just so giving and kind and... I don't know if it was because they didn't have a tour to go back out on immediately. So they were all very relaxed. Mm. That's what I really remember about Todd Scott more than the other ones was that um, they were just being in the moment. And you see how like Todd is just so, he's ha he was very happy. Mm. Mm. He was having fun, no doubt. Yeah, I wonder if he had ever spent a whole lot of time, you know, in, in, Scotland in country. I mean, uh, he said that, that was his first time in Scotland. Oh, nice. No kidding. Okay. Yeah. Wow. He embraced it with the whole. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <nice birthday> present. <laughs> yeah. And, and the other thing, it was, it was light out until like 1030 at night. Oh, and that's so right. we had a really long day. It was just wow. awesome. You know, like the sun, you could still see the sun like at eight o'clock. Right, Cindy? And the view looked out over the ocean and the Isle of Skye, and the sun would set every night. And we would yeah, it was ridiculous. There. It, was, it was really like a fairy tale. So it was, you know, having the castle, and I think it was even called Fairly where we were at, um, or Farley, really gave the illusion that you were in a magical place. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Speaking so, of magic, Bruce, yeah. we got a little medieval. Uh, <laughs> You're going to yeah, go well, medieval it, on our ass here? Why not? <laughs> you know, with that setting, you know, we have a castle, we've got, you know, 
the 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 water there. I mean, it's perfect setting for a little medieval action. So my re recollection is that this would be flipping into the next day. We were all asked to bring, you know, some kind of garb, you know, that would be <laughs> reminiscent of uh, another era in Scotland. And so we're going to have a clip here about um, what I call the medieval gathering. They will hide in every crevice, in any urn or cake. If you stand still for a second, they'll be crawling up the hill. And steps will be to the middle. The air is foul with trappings, and the streets are soft and gore. As they're tossed from open windows. That's good, that's good. I took about ten. Okay, wait, everybody looks serious. Like, really serious. It's a sickening twat like a rock in a bar. Bring out the dead. Bring out the dead. Bring out the dead. Bring out the dead. Another toad in the back, as the crowd is overthrown by a wave of new recruits. To call it a plague isn't nearly enough. I've heard all the explanations and I've done what they suggest, but the changes to my lifestyle are unbearable at best. I've not on their legs till I long to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great tree. I love that you like tree. like that? What a great background. What a great costume uh, participation. Definitely. Well, it was. Now, FYI, Cindy, according to people in our chat room, Todd had been in Scotland before to play state in Glasgow and Edinburgh. Mm. Oh. Yeah. He probably didn't remember. Well, when I when he was when he was signing for me at the end or taking the photo, I said, how are you enjoying Scotland? And he said, well, this is, maybe it was the first time for vacation. Yeah. That he meant. Maybe He's that's what he meant. Yeah, he, definitely he said it was his first time, or maybe it was his first time there in Largs. I don't know. So where did y'all get these outfits? I mean, that's pretty fancy. I mean, do they have like a costume thing at the castle or what? Internet. Really? Party yeah, city. <laughs> yeah, Google uh, medieval medieval costumes, and you wouldn't believe what comes up. It's amazing. That was outstanding participation. Yeah. I want to ask yes. one of you ladies about. Um, I've I saw, in fact, all well, not maybe not all the ladies, but many of the ladies there. Some were dressed in red, and some were dressed in green. Was there some kind of competition that was held? Mm -mm. No, there wasn't a competition. Everyone bought what they brought, what they wanted. But then when we all got there, we soon realized that it was either like blue, red, or green. <laughs> and so everyone <laughs> kind of started separating. And it was like the red queens and the green queens and taking different photos okay. by color. Oh, okay. I didn't know if there was some tug of war. It wasn't pre planned on. or anything. Mm -mm. So did, th that sounded like Drew Tamaki was taking the photos. Did he get in any of the photos? Did he get left out? You mean of, of which photos? The group photo. Oh, medieval? Group talking? oh, I don't remember who was taking that. Sounded like Drew no, Tamaki. Right. Was he there? Was Drew there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> he was in the Secret Society video just before. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 the Drew, I think Drew took the photo, but I don't know if he ended up getting it one of them. I hope he did. I don't know. It may not have been a costume or something like that. So maybe he took the photo. Uh, there you go. He got rejected for not bringing a costume like everybody Absolutely, else. Yeah. Out of way. Out of way to do it. All right. Just um, control. No, we just yeah. had we just had that one video clip, but we do have a lot of still photos uh, shot of smaller groups from okay. from that day uh, from around. You know, people would group together, like she said, like the Green Queens would all go off together and. So I remember Beverly and Susan and a bunch of the other folks uh, had a really good still shots. But um, hopefully they'll be in some of the montages either uh, at the end of the show or we'll make them available to people through the uh, Todd Scott uh, Facebook site. All right. Excellent. So there's a Todd Scott Facebook site. It does have some great pictures. Alice St. Clair took several. I saw what, yes. um, 
coming up here. It looks like we got some Todd concert action. Well, actually, this is first uh, fan band, so this would have been Saturday night, and so we've got selected a couple of our favorite fan band oh. tunes. And okay. the first one, I believe you'll recognize a bunch of folks. I'm not going to introduce it. It'll introduce itself. <laughs> All right, here we go. I thought that was Carrie singing that song. Shinsuke from Japan was there. Yeah, he was yeah. the very first Todd Stock. He's probably been to a bunch. Well, that, that was, was priceless, um, wasn't it? Though. <laughs> yeah. so. One thing I remember about that tent. So, like, there was like the dining hall and a great bar with top shelf. I want to preface that in case there's more dance videos of me going crazy, <laughs> but. <laughs> So when you would walk from the bar to the tent that was in the hills, the hills of Bonnie, Scotland, it with the lights on inside and they started blinking and going on and off at the same time all the music was going on. And so you would just see this huge party. Tent. It was so beautiful. I, I had a feeling I could only see shadows, but I had a feeling the two people up front, one of them was you. <laughs> and and dance, am I right? Yeah. 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 No doubt. It's kind of hard not to dance at that song. Yeah. And the yeah. first time when Kevin came out with like a knight uniform mm. on, he looked like Sean Connery. I mean, it was like perfect. <laughs> he did. He looked like Sean Connery. It was perfect. Sure. 
yeah. from Camelot. <laughs> and the cutest thing is Shin and Kevin were like off, like in the meadow, like rehearsing all day that day. <laughs> and we we just went crazy when he when it because it was a it was a bang a gong redo, but mm -hmm. It was Shin up there singing. Yeah. We're just like everybody went nuts. It was you did a really nice job. Fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Everybody so, finds their inner rock star when they're when they're in front of Todd. Exactly. Somehow. <laughs> Probably not when they're getting filmed, but you know, <laughs> to be seen three years later. So our next up here looks like fan band doing the theme of the fans, pretty much. That's, you know, the ubiquitous one world, and we try. I never, thought, names. I, I never yeah. thought I'd have my name up with Gray Prince and uh, Gray Cox and a biologist. <laughs> yeah. Kathleen. Yeah. Hello, hello. Fact, I, I have a question about that. Um, in the previous video, I, I think Bruce was playing bass and or maybe was it was, was it yeah. Bruce or Chasm? Okay. And yeah. then but I saw Greg Hawks and I think I saw Chasm at one point. You did. Something. Chasm was on guitar. And then in this one we saw oh he was on guitar. Ah, he was on okay. guitar in Bang a Gone. Okay, so 
Yeah, so we've gotten changed as it went on. Bruce might play bass. Catherine would play bass. Yeah. I played uh, yeah. Oh, okay. So they were they were happy to step step away oh, from yeah, the stage. Yeah. Oh, or absolutely. Whatever. They were yeah, we mm-hmm. actually had to recruit them into certain songs, you know, because they knew it best. But uh, in general, we tried to do a lot of rotation. We wanted to try to get as many people up on stage as we possibly could. <laughs> Good plan. Good plan. Good plan. Well, Bruce, you were going to say something about the video, and I inadvertently cut you off and started the video. Was there something else you wanted to add to One World? No, I think we, you know, this that's probably a good way to end the show. So, uh, see ya. Ah! No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, you're having fun. <laughs> yeah, all good. It's a good finale song. <laughs> yeah, that is a good one. <laughs> okay, so this is something I've heard about a ton. Maybe the highlight of the of the weekend or week, whatever you want to call it, the uh, storytelling. Apparently we had some really good ones. Tell me how that came about and how they prepped for this, or is this just some story they knew? What was the criteria? Everything. Well, we had a, we had a poster board or a, you know, dry marker board, you know, where they would put up what the daily activities were going to be. And so we kind of knew about this one in advance that they they were, you know, had a day to kind of get their stories together. But um, my recollection, uh, and correct me guys if I'm wrong, it was Violet Benny who was going to be kind of our MC for this one. And so, you know, more or less the instigator, but it was to talk about, you know, experiences that you'd had with Todd or around, you know, Todd and Utopia. On the road to Utopia. There we go. That was a theme. So people got up that um, second evening and, uh, storytelling and it seems to me like if you watch the camera shots we may have had to split it across two different sessions because we had so many people that wanted to tell stories and todd was listening to this right oh yes because yeah. we had to vote we had to vote at the end just to, you know who told the best story and you have the winning story as part of the show tonight right today that is correct right. yes okay. Right. And it was it was actually based on the moth, you know, the moth that that we have, like NPR does. Um, and Violet loves that, and I think she goes, she participates in in the moth um, where she lives, which is storytelling, basically. Okay. So that was her thing; she wanted to do that here, and it was it was the highlight, really. Sounds like a hit, story. absolutely. So Cindy you may not, had an incredible story. You, you may not Cindy recognize story. this first one. Um, because last time you saw him, he was Todd Runger, but today right. he's Anyways, John Marquette. You know, I had to scratch my nose like John did. About 1968, there was a young lady that moved into my town from Alaska. Her father was in the military. And all of a sudden, she and I developed this instant love-hate relationship. And we would try and run into each other and avoid each other and run into each other and avoid each other. And one night, it was a snowy night in Granite City, Illinois, and I'm coming up the stairs of, of a coffee house, and she's coming in, and there's a chance meeting with no one around. And she had this beautiful black cape with a hood, and that was the first time she and I had touched hands and did that. Then, in 1971, somebody we know put out a song, Long Flowing Road. And I've always associated that with this young lady. We got married in 1973. We played Long Flowing Road as well as several other Todd Rundgren songs as people were being seated at the wedding. We named our son a certain way, and now, uh, uh, 45 years later, it's still here. So every time I hear that song. <laughs> nice. Uh, sweet. There you go. Good song too. I love Long Flowing Road. Good stuff from Mr. Markarian. Married to Deb for 45 years. Now 48, I would guess. Wow. We, we started really? off with a good story because we wanted to give you a feel for how this kind of storytelling, you know, segment worked. And, and so John did a good one. Excellent. So. Next up, we have an overseas guest, not a guest, actually. United States people are guests over there. We have Jenny Green. Yes, my Tenti from Tataru. So she, she at least made it to those two. Yeah, here we go. For 
Jenny Green. Right, so, um, the No World Order Tour 1994 in London. Couldn't go. I was put on night duty. Couldn't go. Devastated. But Todd was doing signings. In the, it was either Virgin Mega Store or HMV in Piccadilly. I can't remember which one it was. Tower Record. It was the one in Piccadilly. What was it Tower Record? Tower. Yeah. Anyway, so my two girls, who were quite young then, they, I think they were going to a concert and they were going to take that or something like that. <laughs> and I said, go and see if you can get Todd's autograph for me. So bless them, they went in there, they, they said, Will you sign something for my mum, please? So he signed a flyer to Jenny, love Todd, and the date. And because um, I was working nights, I didn't see them until the next morning. And my youngest one went, We've got your autograph. He's a bit weird, though, mum. <laughs> <laughs> Now you know why we call it Jenny's weird story. <laughs> no question. He's a bit weird. <laughs> All right, so let's let's hear about the winner because that's coming up next. All right, a little bit of prep here. So um, in 2013, we had Todd Stock version 65 or V6.5, however you want to refer to it, in uh, White Castle, Louisiana, and it was the first time that I'd spent you know some serious amount of time with Jenny Green and Susan Leonard, because the housing situation at uh, the Nottaway Plantation was quite tight. And so a lot of folks had to end up getting motels down the road that were anywhere from, you know, five, seven, 10 miles away, and then, you know, bringing a rental car in or a bus in to get there. But um, Susan and I had known each other from the, um, uh, the original, uh, sessions in Sacramento. So way back to the uh, My Record Fantasy gig that we did. And so she called me up and said, hey, can you know we share a, share a cabana? So we did. But uh, this story that Susan's about to tell was um, on the way, as I recall, either to or from, not away. And it, it, it plays into, you know, how Susan and Jenny and I became brother, sister, and mom. <laughs> well, just for the record, everybody, Susan is watching the show, so she's going to get to see it as well for the first time in three years. So let me make sure I have the right one here. Get ready. Here comes the winner. Okay, about five years ago, Todd came in to the state tour. Closer, closer, sorry, I can hear myself. <laughs> about five years ago, Todd came to the UK and did the state tour, uh, followed immediately by Not Away. And having travelled the country on the state tour, um, Jenny Green came to my house on the Saturday of the London show to help me pack because I am really bad at packing. I can't find anything, I buy clothes, I can't find the scissors to cut the labels off, I make a complete, I bring way too many clothes. And Jenny is brilliant at packing and she just takes half of the stuff, <coughs> put it in a pile and throws it over there. She's, she's very mothering of me. So um, anyway, I pack my, my uh, carry-on, which I've been schlepping around the UK to all the state shows. And the plan was we go to the Saturday Night London show, we hung out until the early hours, we got home at 3 a.m. to my place, we slept for three hours, the cab to the airport woke us up, we ran, you know, we got to the airport, went through security, and we were going to have breakfast after that. Only I had forgotten that I had a tube of moisturiser in the zip pocket of my carry-on. And my bag was swabbed. The moisturiser was swabbed. I was swabbed. Jenny didn't have to get swabbed. But I was, I was really, you know. So we didn't get breakfast. We just had to get through 
we, once we got through security, we ended up just about making it to the gate, getting on, missed breakfast, we had a British Airways or Virgin or something, economy meal. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all we had. Then we had to stop at Miami, and then we had to go through immigration, which took forever. Then we had to recheck our bags. And we then had the hour and a half or so flight to New Orleans. New Orleans. Sorry, I forgot where not away. Um, anyway, we rechecked our bags and we were running, running to the gate and we spotted a Costa Coffee kiosk. <sighs> Quick, let's, they, they must have some food. Let's get some food. So we, we went, we got a muffin each, I think it was, and we stuck them in our bags and we ran to the, the lounge which was full, nowhere to sit, almost time to board. And then we saw, saw two seats, empty. Brilliant. Just for us, two seats. We went over to them and we sat down and that, then we realised why no one was sitting there. Because opposite was a lady on the phone to her partner. And she was related, I think, to Marge Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> She was on the phone and she said, I'll do the phone action, but you know how long my flight is. <laughs> really? <laughs> so? I'm fucking starving. I can't last that long. No, I have no food. I have no money. Oh my God. Are you sure? Oh God. And we're, we're British. We don't do embarrassing mad people. We, we freeze. And we go, what do you do? Look at the floor. Look, look. Look away. Anyway, she finishes her call. And she looks straight at Jenny. And she says, Excuse me. Do you know how long this flight is? And Jenny and her best English said, I believe. <laughs> oh my god! Your accent! I love your accent! Where are you from? She said, I'm from just outside London, actually. And she said, Oh my god, I just love your accent. And then she looked at me and she said to Jenny, Is that your daughter? <laughs> all on my own with this lady who <laughs> then said oh my god have I upset her <laughs> laughing she, she'd gone off to join the boarding line she was killing herself laughing I said, no no I think she's fine and she said, oh I'll apologise to her for me would you tell her I'm sorry you know take no notice of me I've had plain surgery <laughs> I, I, just, I was convinced, well the other thing is, we were hiding our cakes because she was starving. <laughs> but so were we. And so there's no way she was getting my cake, but then I, then I suddenly thought, shit, she's going to be sitting next to me, isn't she? <laughs> I'm not going to be able to eat my cake. And cake is cake. <laughs> so uh, luckily she was not sitting next to me and I did get my cake. But... The final, the end of the story is, we get to New Orleans, we get our bags, we go over to the hotel shuttle, and we get into the bus, and we're sitting there, and we, we see this guy dragging suitcases, and behind him is this lady going, did you bring me a freaking sandwich? <laughs> Did I get this right? Then let's yeah. give it up for the one and only Susan Leonard. Yeah, Susan Leonard! Oh, my great piece of vinyl! Thank you, everybody, for this great event. Thank you for tuning in with the community. Love you all. Come on, Susan, take your
<laughs> what was the prize? I couldn't tell. It was an album. Maybe Susan's in the uh, chat room show. Enlightenment. Some LP. Some vinyl. It looked like it. Probably autographed. He was right there. Yeah, <laughs> it wouldn't be too tough to go ask him for an autograph. So who do you remember? Who else? Uh, where did Anthony go? Oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, wait, we got him. Bring him in. Anthony, who, who else do you remember Whee! did some stories at that storytelling deal? Um, I don't remember anyone. I think I think it was outside <laughs> drinking. <laughs> I did. I had a great story. Yeah. Yeah, no, I had a story. story. I, I saw it. Yeah. Um, who else? Um, Tom. Tom had a oh, that's story. Right. I can pull up the list here, but it'll take me a Violet, second. Go ahead. Violet had a story too, right? She wasn't just the host. Did she do a story? Violet she might have started us off. So Violet, Cindy. All right. Good stuff. Okay. Okay. We've got an answer in chat room. Okay. Bre breaking news. It was an, a signed copy of Swing to the Right. Oh, cool. Swing to the Sweet. Right. Sweet. Very nice, very nice. Very nice. All right, so Mr. Bruce, storytelling was got here. Sounds like we have a little music coming up next, maybe something? We do. Um, and Anthony, remind me, I mean, how did this whole yeah, thing get this, started? Yeah, this was a, kind of a surprise on the last evening. After the actual gig, Leslie Gaston Bird um, approached me and Bruce and Bernie and John McCarion, I think it was, and she produced four kazoos <laughs> and she told us that we were going to do the lord chancellor's nightmare song now there was, there was a piano in the main hall of the uh of, of where all the events were but it was mm -hmm. terrible the keys were broken <laughs> they were sticking it was really, Out of really, a really really bad job of piano but leslie god bless her sat down and todd agreed graciously to do it and uh, you're going to see how it turned out it turned out okay uh, there was a few pa problems i think uh, at the start oh but, yeah uh, it was totally dead uh, at that point yeah yeah it was, it was good fun we, we, there was a kazoo orchestra with uh leslie on piano and todd doing vocals there you go all right this will ready? be fun yep one of a kind Love unrequited robs me of my rest. Love, hopeless love, my heart and soul and thunders. Love, nightmare life, lies heavy on my chest and weaves itself into. When you lie awake with a dismal headache, repelled with simple my anxiety, I can see you make it any day. Would you do to an old without me? Shutter despair. Your 
regular wreck with a crick in your neck. And now what do you snog your hands on the floor? Your needles are bits when you're sold to your shit. Your flesh is a creep for your left leg to sleep. A cramp in your tongue and a fly in your nose. That's a block when you're locking up feverish tongue and a thirst is intense in the general sense that you haven't been sleeping in clover. Darkness and mass and it's daylight at last And the night has been long You know, you know my song And thank goodness they're both of them over That was fun. I still have the kazoo. Oh, oh, awesome. oh good. Awesome. I still can't believe how Leslie made that piano sound so good. Considering that was oh, the yeah. three martini yeah. version of Lord Chancellor's Nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> fun stuff. Move over, Ethel. I hear Nancy Collins all through that whole thing in the background laughing. I mean, it was at the end of the night. It was like the like midnight, right? It was early. Yeah. Monday, it was late. Yeah. Midnight. So everybody was just like, <laughs> three sheets, three sheets. Full of beer and pizza. And how'd you like that microphone action? <laughs> yeah, one plug in. That was when Nancy lost it, I think. <laughs> well, it was the swinging between his legs part that was, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't expect any less from Todd. Yeah, yeah, you, no. got, you got it. You got so, it. So, just a general question, um, Cindy. Let's let you talk, and you can answer this. Uh, did you guys get any feedback from the the townsfolk there? Did they notice you guys were even in town? And was what was this weird festival going on up here at the castle? So we were. I think the festival was about maybe five miles away from the little town and it was a small town as well on the seaside um when i got there earlier i did have breakfast and i'm sorry but it was really hard for me to understand <laughs> most of the local speech because they talk really fast and and what is it gaelic i'm not sure i'm sorry if i butchered that but um they, when they heard my accent, they went, where, where are you from? What's that accent? You know, <laughs> I told them, what, what are you doing here? When I told them, they went, oh, yes, we've heard about those goings on up there. It's <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So it was just referred to as the goings on, I see. <laughs> mm -hmm. Raised a few eyebrows, I think. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, it what, was what, really cute when we all were going to the Waverly, a, a boat that we took a boat ride and Todd was in the front and he walked us through the town to there. And I think that people might have noticed then because we were like the big goose and the little geese behind him, you know, for about a mile. So Pied something Piper. was going on there. Yeah. And you know how we were all dressed. Yeah. <laughs> Pied Piper, definitely. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, they probably were used to having corporate events at the castle and different things. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it's like, what? Yeah, yeah mo mo most of them seemed kind of oblivious to what was going on. But there was one guy, a taxi driver. Um, he, oh, yeah. He, he um, got got wind of Todd being in the castle. And he was a really big Todd Rungren fan. So I think it was Alice, I think, was in yeah. the first night. And he sticks on the best of Todd Rungren. And of course, Alice is going, holy God, you, you're, you're a Todd Rundgren fan. <laughs> and uh, after that, he made a point of um, every trip to the castle to go back into town was Gordon. <laughs> yeah. and he was and he come didn't he come to the show, too? He came yeah, to the show. He, he, got, he got so familiar with us all that we got him an invite to the last night for the show. Perfect. So he was, yeah, uh, he was cool. very, very taken by that. All right. Well, I think I think the Americans were good tippers too, so that didn't hurt. Yeah, that helped. Yeah, yeah. It was the best weekend <laughs> for a while. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, we've got some boat footage, I believe, next. So great segue. You do. Am I right? Now there, there's a story that we have to tell first because it'll lead into what comes after the boat trip. So, the first day of fan band, you know, went pretty well. You know, we had a good ten songs, maybe a few more. We'll have to look at the set list, if I recall. Um, and we had a good rehearsal for it and everything went, you know, ducky. 
Well, the next day, unfortunately, we had to cut the um, rehearsal for Fan Band very short because everybody had to get to this boat trip. Now, the boat trip is a big deal because the Waverly is one of the last uh, ocean-going steamers, paddle wheel steamers in the world. It may be the only paddle wheel steamer that's still uh, mm -hmm. functional in the world. So everybody wanted to go on the boat trip. And so, yeah, if I have to choose between fan band and boat trip, mm, sorry, Bruce, I'm going to the boat. So we went from rehearsal at 10, 11 o'clock until we had to be at the boat at one. We only had three songs ready to go. It's like, oh, crap. You know, how are we going to fix this? So while everybody else is enjoying this trip on the boat, I'm running around saying, have you got any songs you can do? Have you got any songs we can do tonight? Otherwise, we're not going to have a show. Got to pull this together. <laughs> so anyway, um, we'll go ahead and do the boat footage, and then we'll talk a little bit briefly about the uh, Sunday night uh, fan band show. Well, was this boat, uh, did it become part of practice for fan band? No, unfortunately, you know, it was just, okay. uh, it was really an enjoyable day because the weather was, again, it was perfect. It was awesome. Just and wasn't it like there. five hours, that, that boat ride? Wow. It was like five hours. It was uh, total round trip, yeah, it had to be at least four because, you know, by the time we all got there and got on the boat, and, you know, went around for a couple of hours and came back, yeah. It was beautiful, just unbelievable scenery. Hope nobody got seasick. Here we go. Mm -mm. This is the way we do, Proud Mary. And we roll and take it from me. Roll it, roll it on the real. See, we roll it, roll it, roll it on the real. Left up the job in the city. Working. looked like a blast oh it was beautiful. yeah did it were they telling describing to you guys you know this over here on the starboard side is this and that mm -hmm. gorgeous you know todd must like boats because you know he did the ferries and the boats in tataru and i think he might have a little sailor in him <laughs> well he got talked into it because you know way back when he wouldn't go on one of the big cruises right and then you know, later you know, he did. He did the, you know, one cruise that I remember I was on. It was like the Rock Legends cruise. But, um, you know, he can't swim. He that never learned how to swim. And okay. so he was reluctant to be a, you know, sea person and go out on a boat. But once he got over his, you know, scare about being on a cruiser and a big cruise ship, then obviously this was less of a deal. <laughs> yeah, he looks pretty comfortable to me. Well, this was, you know, multi-layer ship. You know, it had several, you know, floors, and there was a restaurant in there, and you could get, you know, beer and wine and wow. whatnot, and meals. Um, but you could see where the the engine area was open, you know, so you're actually watching the 
you know, pistons and the connecting rods and all that really stuff. Really cool. Oh, yeah. I thought maybe that was stock footage you had no. swiped from somewhere. Oh, that's no. cool. No, yeah, some you could of those go down there. You could go down and tour all around the inner workings mm -hmm. of it. It was really great. <laughs> and yeah. it was beautiful, you know. Yeah. Whose idea was it to have the boat trip? Who organized that? That's a good question. Jill? I think it might have been Jill. But Jill. Great idea, whoever it was. Yeah. Jill, yeah. Or Peter, maybe Peter. Too. Maybe. Whoever yeah. it was, good idea. Those were the, those were the two instigators yeah. for all this stuff. But <laughs> yeah, and we just got lucky because the uh, boat had been in for refitting and whatnot. And so they just recommissioned it back into service just before. Cool. But the last face you saw there was David Jessup and David contributed some of the footage for this. He had some good videos. And so I wanted to give him a shout out. He was also, you know, one of our key fan band members since up there singing the songs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So was that just a, a few hours or, or was that all mm -hmm. day that event? Um, well, it was afternoon, but you know, I think we left at one o'clock. And so, you know, you had to leave the castle about 12 to make sure you're there on time because, you know, hey, if you miss the boat, you miss the boat. So true. true. <laughs> so we, then, walked, we, walked from, we walked from the castle to the ocean with Todd leading. He had, he had uh, as he usually does, did a recognizance mission on his own the day before <laughs> and found a really cool trail along the waterfront. So we meandered through that and then into the town and then finally at the boat landing. So even the walk there was really fun. He always works a hike into his, his <laughs> events. Oh, yeah. So, okay. So we're, we've, we're having all this fun on the boat. We we get back safely. Nobody has had to mm -hmm. don the life jackets or anything like that. <laughs> so now, uh, Bruce, you guys have prepared three songs. Yeah. And so I got volunteers while I was on the boat for about three more. So now I'm up to six. It's like, oh my God, that's only like a half an hour. If we're lucky, right? So what do we do? So, you know, uh, I'm hitting up Jesse and Prairie now. It's like, what do you guys know? What can we do? We gotta do something. <laughs> and Jesse says to me, well, you know any Hendrix? And I said, oh, I never thought of that. Well, yeah, I actually do. I know a bunch. He says, well, let's do some Hendrix. Okay. All right. Well, when we get back, let's go figure out some Hendrix. Tunes that we Meanwhile, you know, everybody got the word finally and said, oh, crap, we're not going to have a show tonight unless we you know, come up with some more songs. So now by the time everybody starts piling on at the last minute and saying, oh, well, I can do this, you know, I can do a couple of songs and I can do a couple of songs. It's like the old, you know, <laughs> Mickey Rooney and all that. <laughs> everybody. So we ended up with 14 songs that night, whereas we started with three. So anyway, here's a couple of songs coming up out of the 14 that you'll enjoy. Okay. Oh, 
We are the used cars.
<laughs> what you looking for? <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I'm glad you guys gave Greg some love in with the used cars. Oh yeah. You could he tell played. He, was- uh, he played keyboards on a couple of the other tunes for us. You know, he was a good fill-in person on keyboards, and then um, the lead yeah. singer on that one yeah. was yeah. Ellen Pitch. In the UK school as well, Bruce. That you and I went to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, ukulele was you and I and Bernie, I think, which was good fun. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah, we left that out of the videos today. I apologize. I don't think we had any videos of that, but Greg Greg was teaching us how to play ukulele. He had all the sheet music ready to go with the little chord charts on it, so it's pretty easy to follow. And yeah, it was it was a fun class. He's a lovely guy. And before I forget it, that was our Kathleen. Forsyth on bass on that last. Oh, is that right? Yes, it was. Oh my Woo! God! I just have to tell you, like, I was so nervous because here was <laughs> Jesse on lead guitar, Chasm on rhythm guitar, Prairie on drums, Greg on keyboards, and me. I was just like, and right before the song started, Chasm looked at me and he went. <laughs> And I'm like, thanks a lot. He's like just adding to the the drama and the nervousness. The, the yeah. drama. <laughs> Greg brought Greg brought his wife and his two children there, and they were so sweet the whole time. They were just very, again, loving and um, inclusive. <laughs> they and, were. Yeah. Yes. Great. It was family. great to meet his family because they're really cool people. Yes. Susan said she was on drums for that one. Oh, she was. Okay. Just make sure we get our facts correct. That's all. (laughs) Okay, Bruce, what do we got this beginning? I have no idea what this is. So um, how about intro? Well, so it's a little bit of, uh, you know, obscure Hendrix thing, but it was something that Jesse suggested, you know, when we were scraping to get enough songs together to do the fan band on, uh, when was that? I guess it was Sunday night. Um, and then, you know, Monday was when Todd's concert was going to be. So there wouldn't be a fan band. So this is it, you know. Uh, but um, he had suggested we do a song called Beginnings, also known as Jam Back at the House. Um, and I actually knew it. It's like, OK, but we did this without rehearsal. But it was a super big hit with the folks in the audience because, you know, wow. it was Prairie, Prairie, me and Jesse just kind of jamming out. Oh, this will be fun. Did you have something you want to say, Cindy? Turn up the volume. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Little Hendrix.
trippy. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay. I wish I could turn that up. I can't control that in here, but you can't oh, on bad. your YouTube or wherever you you're go. watching this. Facebook. Awesome. Good stuff. Crank it up, baby. Yeah. Yeah, and I'd forgotten about the fact that uh, Jesse's cord from his guitar actually popped out at the end of that. <laughs> so he's fishing around on the floor for it to do that last. I was last... wondering what that was. Yeah. Yeah, okay. uh, the cord <laughs> fell out and he had to go fishing for it. And then luckily, Prairie was covering with kind of the drum roll. <laughs> I'm 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 okay, everybody yeah. sticking with us. Um, awesome. We appreciate you, and you're going to get to see some good Michelle and Todd stuff. That Bruce is safe for last. Before that, though, we got something that's become popular at Todd Camps and Todd Stocks. Bruce, tell us a little bit about the drum circle action. Yeah, I actually missed out on this, and uh, I think there's some folks in the uh, chat room that you know were there. But uh, yeah, Prairie, as usual, announced and put on the board that he was going to do a drum circle. So even after the fan band, which you know didn't get done until. Like, I don't know, 11, 11 30. They're out there around the campfire doing the drum circle. Yeah. Cindy, you're smiling like you were there. Is that correct? I was. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> were you at the one at Todd Stock West as well? Oh, yeah. So you're oh, a drum yeah. circle expert. And this one was fun. Yes, it was wonderful. Again, it was beautiful weather. We were allowed, you know, we could stay out so late and just really enjoy. Um, the company, I think it, this one, because some people were in the castle, some people were in tents, we were kind of spread out. So really, you know, congregating in areas like the dining hall or the tent or the drum circle was um, really fun. All right, here we go. I think that was just, a little more organized than Todd Stock West, just saying. There was a lot of people with that one all over the place. But uh, That was just a sample. Yeah, that's so good. Done also, very well. Yeah. Obviously went on much longer than that. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, I, there there can be no denying we are still a bunch of big old hippies, aren't we? <laughs> mm, aren't we, though? Well, uh, Todd Stock West had Michelle teach some people a song for Rise, and I'm assuming that might be what happened here. Same kind of thing. Yeah. Maybe I beat it, beat, yeah. beat Todd Stock West to it. So you were first to do it. So uh, that's mm -hmm. coming up next. Um, Bruce, tell us a little bit about that. Is that kind of the same deal? Well, uh, yeah, he was. And so I think someone who had done the other one, you know, must have suggested that we do that again. Um, you know, it seems to me like Violet and some of the other folks were instigators on that deal. But uh, I don't know, Kathleen, uh, Cindy, did you participate in this one? No, I didn't do so this one, but I did the one, <laughs> <laughs> the Redwoods and on the boat, on the magic boat in Sydney mm. Harbor was probably. Oh, oh, wow. yes. that, 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 oh, that, that dance routine went around the world. Baby. <laughs> it did go around okay. the world. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. All right. Well, let's check it out. So that this was, we know we, I don't know if East had it, but we know three Todd stocks mm. had the, Michelle teaching folks the rise dance. Here yeah. we go.
I did do it again. I was going to say, Kathleen did too. Yeah. Definitely. I saw you in there. <laughs> I, just thought I, was, I just thought I was in rehearsal because I usually uh, could never do anything. You probably were. Just in rehearsal. I've risen yeah. so many times I've ascended. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I haven't heard I haven't heard uh, that song in quite a while, and it that is one good one. Oh, I'm gonna have to get in the car later and listen to it really loud. Yeah, good job, you dancers out there. there you fine, go. fine job. Michelle's a great teacher. She is. She is. She is. Okay, so uh, are we gonna get to see any Todd performances, Bruce? <laughs> Well, you know, we saved the best for last, I guess. Not the um, best, not necessarily the best. <laughs> well, the big event, which you came to see, maybe. Um, yeah, so we probably did that last video a little bit out of order because we wanted to break it up a bit. But we wanted to give you a good feel for everything that went on at the camp. I think two things that are missing that we didn't have good footage for to be able to present here. One was he did a huge autograph signing thing where there was a table set up and he and Michelle, you know, had people file in and get a photo, photo op. Um, the other thing was hikes, you know, cause Todd's a big on getting his exercise in the morning. So, you know, up the mountain, down the mountain, um, you know, not, not my thing given that I was wrangling the fan bands, but other people obviously went on these great hikes with Todd, but no footage for that. So we're in the last day and it was a Monday. So it was kind of, you know, straddling the weekend is kind of a odd number of dates but that's what fit best for todd's schedule so we got three tunes coming up from todd's concert okay that's what you'll see next super so uh we'll just don't... um play them all three in a row what do you think what the heck you good with that cruise your mouth i am thank you so much everybody else good with it hit it going once going twice yeah go for it I think we just made that decision. It's very clear in black and white. Without a net, people, no sound check. Never played through this rig before in my life. Let's see how it goes. <laughs>
milk and crackers. I ask you one question, you silly so and so. With all your dope, are you having any fun? What you getting out of living? What good is what you've got if you're not having any fun? Are you having any laughs? Are you getting any loving? If other people do, so should you have your little fun. After the honey's in the comb, little bees go out to play. You know the old gray man down home's got to have hay. Hey, you better have some fun.
Ooh. Great song. I think that's so good. good to see those guys again. Oh, it is. Oh, my goodness. That, that Fabulous. That is and remains Todd's only ever unpredictable show in Europe. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a good one, look like. It was interesting. It was a long set, too. I think they did like 21 or 22 songs. It was, yeah, it was an awesome show. Whoa, great. Yeah. It was just a perfect end to a perfect weekend, really, Bruce. Yep, I agree. Yeah. So, we, need um, a pan we need a pandemic survival Todd Stock. We do. <laughs> yeah. we do. Pandemic Todd Stock. Like That's it. a great idea. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, yes. if we could repeat this one or, you know, get close to it, it would be awesome. What was you doing, Reykjavik in Iceland, somewhere halfway between, you know? Why not? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, somewhere oh, where really? a volcano is spewing. That's a good idea. <laughs> Hawaii. Let's go back to Hawaii. What the hell? Yeah. Let's go back to Hawaii. That would be yeah. my vote. Yeah. There you go. That's my vote. <laughs> I wish I, I wish let me put an appeal out there to all you people listening, especially those who attended Tadaru. I would love to to somebody's got to have some decent video that we can patch together into an RRVV show from Tadaru. Um, uh, we we, we got to do it because I didn't yeah. take very many pictures or anything. I was so in the moment when I was there that now I want to relive it again because I'm loving this Todd Scott. Good stuff. It yeah. is. Yeah. yeah, that one was very special too. They all are. Yeah. Yeah, they all are. That's what's amazing. They're each unique. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All of them have their own thing. So we have uh, two more videos really though. I'm not familiar, uh, Bruce, with what this next one is. Uh, yeah. Leslie's a couple, us out. couple and, uh, things. To, go ahead. Yeah. Well, let's do let's do that, and and uh, we'll we'll do um, maybe after that we'll chat some more before we do the uh, final the montage, okay. so that we can see if, make sure we didn't leave any stone unturned. Mm -hmm. But uh, what's the deal with the Leslie's video? Well, so first of all, I got to do a shout out for Leslie Gast Leslie Gastonbird. Sorry, Leslie, I just butchered your name, <laughs> and she's in the chat room, so I'm in big trouble now. Oops. Uh, Leslie is amazing because she actually, you know, teaches music and um, was able to help us a lot with fan bands and, and uh, the, you know, the other musical, you know, etudes there um, <laughs> because she has great music reading skills. She was able to play keyboards on a lot of the songs. She actually did several songs herself. Uh, during the fan band on a Sunday night. Uh, but she was just uh, totally instrumental, ha, no pun intended, in getting us organized and uh, helping with the sound stage and sound people. Uh, so big shout out. But she put together her own montage of her experience with Todd Scott. And so what's coming up next is Leslie's video. All right. Perfect. Through the eyes of Leslie. Here we go.
ninth and then I heard it yeah they Come, somebody hit that minor second, would you? Pretty bird. Oh, yeah. Not a pretty thing dead on the end of the shaft of the Nailed it. <laughs> and we haven't practiced the ending. So I think it's coming up. And this is going to be the end. Let's end on a D major chord, shall we? <laughs> what was that there at the end? Well, so there were some presents that uh, people had sent, you know, to hand out. And I think Violet was the one who had uh, the nose whistles uh, and for the kids. So there's this, like, yeah. nose whistle thing. And then I noticed there were some uh, Todd dolls. Uh, I think that was Carolyn. Yep. Sit out. Of course. Yeah. 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 So shout outs there. And, yeah, Leslie sang and that whole thing. Yeah, you could tell that was Super. Great song. Yes, you did a great Super. job of participation. That's going to be one of the songs on the Todd tour coming up in October. For some people, we'll get to hear it. Some won't. Depends on whether you get the two-nighter and which album side he chooses for AWOTS. But, uh, okay, so we got the final montage coming up. But before that, uh, Mel and I are going to disappear and let y'all chat it out and make sure we haven't missed anything and talk about anything else you'd like to close out on Todd Scott and just tell me when to hit the end, and we will show it. So you ready? Can y'all handle that? Thanks for sharing, guys. Yeah, we loved it. Well, I hope everybody well, enjoyed that. Thank you. Go ahead, Cindy. That was awesome. I, I also just wanted to mention the wonderful mural that Prairie had done. He always leaves some art piece behind, and this was a wonderful concert festival event center, and he left behind a beautiful Todd Scott mural that all of us and we're able to help paint after he outlined it and we all signed it and left something in Scotland. I think we use everyone. a photo of that for the advertisement yes. for this. So if folks, you know, are, you know, not connecting with what we're talking about, you know, there's this big star with Todd in the middle and Todd, or I'm sorry, Prairie painted that during yep. the camp. And yeah. uh, so a lot of people were able to, I think, autograph it and whatnot. But, yep. uh, Another thing we forgot to point out, the Kelburn Castle, you want to go back and, you know, Google that and look it up online because you'll see this, you know, mural painting on the outside of the castle. And, you know, the people that now own the Kelburn Castle and the estate, you know, obviously over the years, you know, it's no longer a feudal castle where they're, you know, raising, you know, animals and grain and whatnot. And, you know, have lots of people working there to keep the castle going. So they have to find other ways to keep it going. So arts, music, festivals like this are what fund, you know, the, the uh, maintenance and operation of the, of the estate. And so uh, they at some point decided that it was okay for some artists to actually, you know, kind of paint the outside of the castle. And so if you see it in the background, that's what that's all about. Yeah. Yeah, I think my abiding memory of the whole weekend, Bruce, is just the camaraderie and the spirit of everyone was just so good, you know. I think we had a pretty good coverage of everything that happened tonight. Uh, possibly one of the things we missed was the, the, the quiz that Jenny did, mm. but which wasn't covered, which was great fun at the time as it's well, you know. Fun. But no, it's an absolute, I, I knew a few people from the UK before I went, but obviously I hadn't met you guys, so that was a, a bonus. Um, and to say, hopefully we'll, we can do it all again sometime. 
it's been wonderful reliving it tonight. I really enjoyed every minute of it, and good to see you guys again. I'm yeah, glad you enjoyed it. Good to see you it. too. Yeah. Good to and see yeah, everybody. I, I saw the quiz pop up in the chat room, so you're right. You know, we, we didn't have any footage of that, unfortunately, to share. The quiz was just so, like, wild and and, and competitive and – Oh my God! And the the the, t the front table where it was, you know, Chasm and Mary Lou, and like they they just had some insights into a lot of those those questions, you know. And so we were all just like, it was very competitive. But I think I think we, we were in the same team someday, weren't we? We were, and you were yeah. amazing, by the way. <laughs> well, <laughs> Definitely well, we well, spot we, we on. The same, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so let's cue the guys because, yeah, we have, I think, still photos set to music to kind of give you a capture of all the things that went on during the camp. It wasn't a full week, but it sure seemed like it. And believe it or not, it was only three years ago, folks. It just yeah, seems like it was so long with the pandemic in the middle. But we gotta uh, do it again. We do. Yeah. Definitely. So thanks, Doug.